At the same time, somewhere in the city, inside a tavern, a man approached a woman who was covering her face with a fan and they both started to flirt. Not far away there was a casino, where with an excited smile, a man threw the dice into the roulette. Alcohol. Women and gambling were common in the red light district of Lambaster, where one could partake in all forms of pleasure and ecstasy. Near a bridge there was a nightclub. While there were drunks lying on the ground others were dancing with women. Cyan arrived at the area, began to observe this, and decided never to approach that place. This place belonged to Delkia. Cyan began to remember the moment when she had taken his arm and had started to caress it with her cheek. Upon remembering this, his eyes filled with displeasure. The truth was that he hoped she would be like that, but he remembered that it was said she had somewhat questionable taste. He grabbed the hood with his hand, turned around, and decided to look in other regions for clues about Lintz. At that moment, a girl carrying a basket bumped into him, causing the contents of the basket to fall to the ground. She was not the typical girl who sold matches in winter, the basket contained boxes of cigarettes. The girl fell to the ground, and while she had one hand resting on it, she started to touch her back with the other, feeling a little pain. Cyan turned around and asked her if she was okay. This girl was a little girl, she clenched her fist and with a sincere look apologized to our boy. Upon hearing this, Cyan's eyes turned white with confusion. He didn't know why she was apologizing. He approached the basket, took one of the boxes and upon opening it saw that there were cigarettes inside. He picked up all the boxes, put them in the basket and while he was standing up, with a sincere look began to look down at the ground and asked her if she was hurt anywhere. Deep down he knew that he should be the one who should be apologizing. The girl was somewhat surprised by Cyan's behavior and replied that she was fine. But not long after, she placed her hands on the ground and began to prostrate herself before him thanking him for his mercy. Upon seeing this, Cyan was somewhat confused and ordered her to stop. He handed her the basket and thought that this was too much, asking her if she was selling this. She began to extend her hands to take the basket and explained that these were exquisite cigarettes from the Grey Merchant Union, asking if he wanted to buy one. With a serene look, Cyan replied that he did not smoke, his eyes filled with questions as he did not remember any group called the Grey Merchant Union. The girl took the basket and started bowing her head before him apologizing again. Cyan did not lose his composure. He began looking at the ground and asked where she was going to sell the cigarettes. She got a little nervous and with a sincere look revealed that in the alleys west of the red light district, she could sell everything if she was lucky during the night, so she could go home before dawn. With a serious look, Cyan realized what position she was in. She could only go home after selling the whole lot. He took out a golden coin and asked if he could buy the whole lot with it. The girl looked somewhat confused, started to look at Cyan, and remembered that he had said he didn't smoke. Cyan bent down, got closer to her, and told her to take the coin. Then, he took out two more coins and with a cheerful smile said that these coins were also for her. Upon seeing the two gold coins, the girl's eyes filled with excitement, making her start to feel happy. She handed the basket to Cyan, turned her back on him and as she was walking away, she began to say goodbye to him with her hand thanking him and swearing not to forget about this. Cyan, who was holding the basket in his hand, started observing her and remained silent. He threw the basket in the air and using his power began to burn it. Karam manifested. She was furious. With a look full of rage she asked why he didn't start doing charity work instead. Cyan closed his eyes and with a sincere expression explained that in the direction where the girl had gone was the waste site. He decided to follow her. Karam's eyes filled with confusion. She started to look at him and asked why. Cyan who was looking down, replied that she was going to see very soon why. After a few minutes, someone hit the girl causing her body to be thrown back and impact hard against the ground, making her start to writhe in pain. At that moment, the gold coin she had in her pocket flew out and fell to the ground. The person who had hit the girl was the criminal whom Cyan had beaten up earlier. Upon seeing the coin, he couldn't help but become enraged and realized that the girl had lied to them about not having any more gold coins. He started to crack his fingers. He began to look at the girl and with a confident smile thought that she was also lying about selling all the cigarettes. The bald man who was behind him also started to smile and asked him to teach her a good lesson. He began to stare intently at the girl and with a smile decided to hit her to release the anger he had inside because of that bastard Simon. The criminals began to approach the girl who was lying on the ground. She put her hand over her face and her eyes filled with fear and tears, explaining that she had not stolen the coin, begging them to please believe her. At that moment, Cyan who was standing on top of the wooden debris appeared and told them that she was asking them to believe her, questioning why they did not stop. Upon hearing Cyan's voice, a shiver ran through the entire body of the criminals, 
They began to feel fear as they realized whose voice this belonged to. Cyan started staring at them intently. For him it was pathetic to see mature adults stealing money from children. Far from feeling fear, the blonde-haired man filled with courage, clenched his fist, started looking at Cyan and could not help but smile upon seeing that he had come to their base on his own. This time he decided not to let his guard down. While on the other side, the two men who were with him were not very sure about this decision. Just before the man could make a move, Cyan descended to the ground and placed his foot on the man's face, leaving him somewhat confused. He started beating up the criminals again. The girl stood up and was somewhat surprised. She couldn't believe that Cyan was beating them up. In the blink of an eye, Cyan defeated the criminals once more. While the blonde man's body lay on the ground with a piercing look, Cyan approached and grabbed his foot with both hands. Upon feeling this, the man who had bruises all over his face panicked and with a sincere look asked for forgiveness, questioning why he was doing this to them. Cyan, who had grabbed the man's leg with both hands, began to look down at the ground and after thinking replied that he simply felt joy for the smallest things. He began to stare intently at the man and with a smile revealed that he enjoyed torturing bad guys. After saying this, Cyan grabbed the man's leg even harder and with a bit of force broke his bone, causing the man to open his mouth and start screaming in pain. Then, he approached the girl who was sitting on the ground, picked up the coin from the floor and mentioned that this guy wasn't going to be able to walk for a good while. Upon hearing his voice, the girl turned to one side and seeing him, she couldn't help but be somewhat surprised. After picking up the coin, Cyan approached her and with a smile asked her not to throw away the coin next time. With a sincere look, the girl thanked him. At that moment, a man with white hair appeared and started clapping with a smile, he was impressed. Upon feeling his energy, Cyan went on alert, began to turn around and with a distrustful look asked who he was and if he knew him. The reality was that he should not be able to recognize Cyan due to the spell. This man was none other than Gunther. He put his hand under his chin and could not help but smile, and explained that he was a little undecided about it, but there was only one person who was as skilled as him. Cyan began to observe the man and fell silent. Gunther started pointing at Cyan with his finger and with a smile came to the conclusion that he was Lemmy's Simon. He was delighted to meet him and introduced himself as Gunther Lictus, the owner of this place. Cyan didn't even seem surprised at all. He kept his calm. He wanted to ask that guy who was lying on the ground a couple of questions. But now that Gunther was here, he decided to ask him instead. Gunther looked to the side and realized that Cyan was talking about his useless subordinate. He put his foot on his face. The man revealed that Cyan was the bastard who had beaten them up last time. At that moment, with an evil smile, Gunther stepped hard on the man's head, ending his life since this guy was no longer anything but useless. Upon witnessing this scene, the girl fell to the ground, put her hands over her face and with a terrified look began to scream, causing her whole body to start trembling. With a disdainful look, Cyan told Gunther that there was no need to kill him. Gunther brought his hand close to his face, and while he was laughing, he apologized, explaining that he had gotten a little excited. A little blood fell on his face. Using his finger, he started licking the blood, began staring intently at Cyan and revealed that he had just returned from meeting the owner of Lambaster Cage because he wanted to fight against him. Upon hearing this, Cyan's eyes filled with rage. He realized that this bastard knew Lin's nail off. Without wasting a second, Cyan launched a strong kick. Gunther looked to the side and upon seeing the attack, he couldn't help but be somewhat surprised. Using all his strength, Cyan delivered a powerful kick. But just at that moment, Gunther put his elbow in front of him, successfully blocking the attack. His eyes filled with excitement, causing him to start smiling. Cyan's attack had a lot of weight. He was somewhat surprised to see that he wanted to fight now. Cyan attacked again, but Gunther once more put his elbow in front and blocked the attack. However, this time his body began to slide back several meters. He decided not to stand idly by. He used his power and his fist transformed into rock. With a murderous look, he decided it was time to counterattack. Using all his strength he threw a strong punch towards Cyan, but he jumped and dodged the attack at the last second, causing Gunther's fist to impact against the ground. Gunther's attack had so much energy that the ground broke into pieces. Cyan who was in the air began to observe him and realized that he was destroying the place. Gunther began to pull his fist out of the ground and Cyan couldn't help but wonder if he had some kind of ability to enhance his strength. He pulled his fist out of the ground, turned around, started looking at Cyan with an excited look and couldn't help but smile since there was no need to wait until the match. He gained momentum, destroying the ground into pieces once again. In the blink of an eye he reached Cyan. 
He was better than Gunther had expected. Seeing that he was ready to attack, Cyan realized that this was not good. He started to stare at Cyan and with a smile asked him to keep entertaining him like that. Cyan's eyes filled with worry and he began to feel great pressure, realizing that this guy was not in his right mind. Using all his strength, Gunther delivered a strong blow to Cyan's chest, causing his body to be thrown towards the ground. At the same time in some place in the pocket dimension of the God of Black Fog, there were some kinds of pillars. On one of the pillars was Serica meditating. She had her eyes closed and her body was surrounded by an intense and powerful purple fog. At that moment, someone appeared and revealed that he knew she had given Cyan an interesting mission. Upon hearing the voice, little by little Serica began to open her eyes. This person was none other than the God of Black Fog, revealing that the person mentioned in the mission was not on the altar list. Serica closed her eyes and could not help but smile. He started to stare at her and put his hand under his chin. He did not intend to give her a lesson, but it was surprising that she had decided to include Cyan in her personal affairs. Serica began to show a smile, responding that she had no intention of denying it. The god of Black Fog who had his hand under his chin remained silent, and Serica revealed that Linj Nihalov was someone they had to eliminate at some point. Her eyes filled with emotion and her body began to emit an intense fog. With a smile she explained that she just wanted to test Cyan to see if he was someone who could be trusted as the successor. Just before she could finish speaking, the god of Black Fog interrupted her. He started pointing at her with his finger and with an excited look explained that there was the possibility that Cyan turned out like Linz Nihalov, a very interesting enigma. She started to look at him and with a smile explained that they were going to discover it soon since one could never predict destiny. At the same time, Cyan's body hit the ground hard, destroying the area into pieces. Several seconds later, he stood up, took an offensive stance, and with a firm look prepared to continue fighting. Cyan began to stare intently at Gunther. He was somewhat surprised to see that Cyan was still standing after that attack. He was proud to have found someone like him. While Gunther had one hand on his waist, he started to crack his neck using the other and with a smile asked if Cyan was ready to continue with the fight. Cyan remained silent. Gunther began to stare at him and with a smile asked him to continue with his gimmick. This is the end of the video, if you guys want to see the next part, then don't forget to subscribe and like the video.